All right, we're going to do uh, almost a complete tear down on a steel MS500i. I've never tore one of these down. Um, I've only owned it for this will be my second day. I put, I think, 11 tanks through it, maybe 10. Uh, runs really good. It's a very light saw. Uh, what was it? Uh, 79 cc's almost 14 pounds um about a half pound three quarter pound lighter than a 572 full pound lighter than uh 7310 uh this is a fuel injected saw it has a primer bulb right here that primes the fuel system you have to when it's cold hit it seven times to uh build up pressure to start it, it has no choke um means it's fuel injected decomp Comes off the top right, uh, magnesium clutch cover, has a uh, captured bar nut, stainless steel muffler, um, good balance, good power. Um, I don't know if it's rev limited because I can't find my tack. My boys borrowed it and uh, <laughs> never returned it. Um, but it sounds like it's limited by fuel. That's a guess but it sounds like it's limited by fuel meaning when it over revs I, I believe it's pouring more fuel into the cylinder to slow itself back down not 100 percent sure but it certainly sounds like that um, i won't know until i get my uh, my tack comes tomorrow a new opama tack coming tomorrow uh, and then i can see if the rev bounces around on it um pulls a 28 really nice um, it's a little bit faster stock than a 572 and a 565. Um, elephant in the room. It's very expensive. Uh, 28 light bar um, in the United States is around 1400 bucks, which is, that's really getting up there. Um, it does not have any kind of air injection system. I don't know why Steel decided not to implement that on this saw. Just has your standard max flow type filter on it, and then your vents on the on the outside. It has no air ducting from the actual flywheel to, to pre-clean air. I have not opened this up since I started cutting with it. Um, like I said, 10, 11 tanks. It is not fuel efficient. Uh, big surprise being fuel injected. I guess I had it in my head that it would be very efficient with its um, charge and its burn but she eats fuel i would say more than a 461 um, definitely way more than a 572 with strato i haven't really compared it to my ported 7310 yet but that does kind of drink some fuel as well um anyway i think uh we'll tear this in tear into it a little bit and see what the guts look like um basically when i'm done with this i'm just going to pull the rings off and then I'll prepare to, to figure out what I can do to get a little bit more power out of it. I'm going to pull the rings and then time it and whatnot. Uh, time the ignition on it as well to, uh, to uh, see how many degrees before top dead center it fires. Um, well, yeah, let's tear into it a little bit here. Pop the cap for the first time. Got, we got dust. I cut a lot of hard ash today. And, that, and I ripped most of it, actually. I, I didn't uh, cut it lengthwise very much today. We did a lot of ripping for uh, firewood. Um, and you can see the filter there. It does have fines in there. Uh, a couple of chunks of ribbons of uh, wood in there. A little bit on the top cover. And we got dust in there, too. No big deal blow this off quick well let's do this first get that chunk out of there so we don't end up with that in the motor don't knock anything in there and it's really clean in there you can see that Cleats have quite a bit in them for not having air injection that, uh, yeah, that doesn't help out very well. But, the intake itself, 
It does get underneath the filter, but there's nothing on the butterfly. There's nothing on the inside of the throat or anything. Um, beans are fuel injected. It has one butterfly. And kind of looking it over earlier, I do not see a throttle position sensor. So I don't know how um, the ECU understands where the throttle is. Um, I'm guessing it's going off of RPM. Maybe when we tear it down a little bit, we'll see maybe a hidden sensor. Maybe there's a barometric sensor built into the injector itself. I don't know. It might be in the intake too. So I'm going to blow this out a little bit here so we don't end up with some in the motor. Take the top off. One quick release on that. Pretty standard stuff from steel. Looks like we got a large partition wall to keep heat out. Um, we got some wires coming up here from the flywheel. Um, some hoses. That's quite a bit of ripping wood in there. Like I said, captive bar nuts. Pretty standard for the industry anymore. Pretty small clutch cover, like most seals. Inboard clutch, 3 8 rim, 7 pin, um, mag case. Let's see what we have to mess with though. So let's pop the top handle off. plastic ones and then we got a limiter on top looks like it's got a rubber sock for the limiter it's got an AV spring up top with a cable limiter in it and then two bolts on the bottom the handle we have an AV down here, kind of goes up, I don't know, at a 45. And interesting design there. How it captures the bar, there we go. Slides out and forward. It actually separates the handle. That's a surprise. So the, the foot plate is separate from the AV. It bolts through into the handle. That's interesting. There's a separate there. Here is our limiter stop. And it is, it's a hard plastic thinking that might be where my vibration is coming from um, when I'm pulling on it kind of hard that's translating into the handle maybe move, upgrading that to a rubber rubber um, cap might be something I'll look into here Like I said, top AV has a limiter spring or a limiter cable inside. Let's see here. Muffler looks like pretty standard steel stuff. Um, it is stainless steel. Four bolts hold the front plate on. Bottom two go into the mag case. There's a washer on there. Only a washer on clutch side. Interesting. Hollow front, 
they got a crush washer like they always do on the interior or ceiling. Muffler is all but hollow. Better get my light out for that. You guys aren't going to be able to see in there. Go straight into the piston. Looks like a dual ring. Very, very small exhaust port. Like 50cc size <laughs> exhaust port. That's that's interesting. Maybe you don't have one of these things yet. Milwaukee, I'm sure DeWalt does too, but they make a six inch T27 that's rated for uh, impact. These are amazing. You have to have these. Great for cylinders. So, muffler. Very simple. Screens right on the inside here. Like I said, extremely small exhaust port. Very interesting. Got our gasket, comes apart in one assembly. Exhaust port, throw those in there. Very tiny and almost no room to expand it. Very thin walls top and bottom you're not going to horn this thing out interesting pop the recoil off everything is locked tight We do have some air ducting in here uh, that goes up to the top of the cylinder. It looks like they're trying to force as much as they could up to that cylinder to keep her cool. Last to start, of course. It is kind of a bugger to pull over. Uh, I don't know what the compression is going to be yet, but you can also see how small the diameter is here for turning it over. So I think that might have something to do with it. Flywheel is extremely thin. Um, the only one issue I have had with a saw is once it is hot, I mean, when you're pull, pulling noodles for quite some time, I found that I couldn't use the decomp. Um, it would not pop it. It would not start. It, well, it would pop and try to start, but it wouldn't blow the decomp out, so then it would just die, so I'd end up pulling the decomp out with my fingers. Um, and then, as long as you just don't use it once it's hot, it was perfect. That might be something that runs in as compression comes up. I don't know. But it is something to note. That is something that I did have kind of an issue with. Got our leads. For our ignition. Comes off the ECU. Which sits on the clutch side. In here behind. It goes all the way down here. And then there's a retainer screw underneath that holds it in place. Holder out of here. Lift it up and out of position. Just another partition for a filter holder. Pretty standard. Now for the butterfly. Oh, it looks like we got a mess in here. Butterfly, that's all it is. It's just a metal plate with one single butterfly. Linkage is very simple to deal with. Um, I'm gonna blow this out though so again I don't get anything in the engine. Wow. 
can see after about 100 hours, this thing is going to be packed full. Crazy. Okay, I'm going to do this off camera a little bit. More in there than I anticipated. Okay. So the throttle plate, throttle body, whatever you want to call it, just pops right out. That's all it is, just a spring and a plate and a throttle plate. Very simple. Um, there's no sensor on it. There is a port right here that was drilled and then tapped. And then another air port right there, so I don't know. I honestly don't have a clue what that does because it is well it's not open to atmosphere it's open to the actual to the vacuum of the intake system set that there got a ring in here keep the intake from collapsing standard stuff all right so we got some wire management on the right side, I'm going to pop that one out, got some wires that run up and underneath here, you don't see where the throttle linkage comes out. This wire set goes over to the primer system, just like so. We're going to pull that out and over to this side, and then we've got a blue plug right here for the center, that goes to the... That goes to the fuel injector. We've got four wires. And we've got another four pin set that goes up and over this partition wall. Right here. I mean, their wire management is pretty good. And then that goes down this other partition wall. Um, it goes down to the flywheel. Pop that off. Other one loose, and that one goes the other direction. There we go. Now that's out and out of the way. Looks like we've got one screw that holds this partition here. We might have to pop. Let's see if that, yep, that's separate from this plastic piece. So that should come out with a cylinder. see anything else we've got the hose that goes to the injector right here that comes off the primer assembly we've got fuel crank case so in the center it looks as though we have uh, the crank case impulse for the pump this one goes to the injector it looks like and then this one goes to the tank Let's see if we can pull that assembly out of there Oh no. Did they use one T25? <laughs> I don't know if I have one of those out. Let's see here. Yep. T25 there. There's a little retainer plate. There, keep that screw in that. There, we can see our hoses a little bit better. So, this one goes to the injector, no, I'm sorry, this one goes to the impulse, this one goes to fuel feed, this one goes out to the injector. And this one right here is a return from the injector back into the tank so it continuously circulates um, AV mounts we got one right here we had the one in the front the one on the side and then yeah that's it so
separate. Now, pull that pump assembly out. They are all barbed, it looks like. Whew, they are on there. If they're running any kind of pressure, they would have to be. And then that is, yeah, that's our fuel feed right there. It popped out of the tank itself. There's a rubber grommet, so this is separate from the hose that goes down into the tank. And here is our pump right there oh cap comes off so here's our pump assembly wire harness that goes to the stop to the kill and once the uh, the system is primed the vacuum or the, the impulse from the crankcase continues to pump set that off to the side now we're down to Intake boot, press that through. There's that hose. There is the fuel injector return and the impulse it's right there. Okay, now we got her separate. that out so here's your handle assembly fuel tank trigger assembly here's your breather it's built right into the tank there's no hose that goes to it um, you can see the ECU right there and the coil assembly controls the fuel intake manifold quite large Here's your fuel injector with your harness that goes to it and your impulse feed. This goes to underneath the coil. I'm assuming there's a stator. Right there is a release and right there is a release. So to separate that, we'll have to take this, <clears throat> excuse me, this little torque out, which I don't have that out either. <clears throat> Let's see what size that guy is. And it is a ten. Screw back in. Now we have our harness separated from the injector itself. I see no other harnesses going in. I'm also not seeing a, still not a throttle position sensor. I don't see one at all. There's three bolts right there. That one is released. I'm assuming at this point we can just pull the cylinder out. Before we get too far, we'll pop the flywheel off. 13. tool you don't have a flywheel knocker tool 
highly suggest it. Husqvarna will sell you one, otherwise you can make your own. I just take a nut and a piece of stock, weld them together for about any application. There's no external coil on this, I can see. And we have a ring of magnets. Flywheel is extremely light. I should probably get a weight on that thing because, man, that thing is light. No alterations may cause burst hazard. There's our stator. Looks like we've got a pickup down here. I'm assuming a crank position sensor. Interesting. I think I'm going to leave all that alone. So we've got a, it has to be a crank position sensor. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm seeing no obvious indication of where it would trigger off of. But for the ignition, there has to be a crank position sensor, being as there's not a coil mounted on it specifically. So somehow electronically, it knows where the top dead center is. Let's pop that off before I get the cylinder loose. We have a CMR 6H for a plug. One of the little guys. And pop those out. There we go. So we have a small intake port. A small exhaust port and a very small front fed peel that off get a better idea here very small front fed transfer port interesting the way they're going about this we got quads and the quads are large um, the quads look like they're about double the size as the actual feed port there. Now the tunnel looks huge, but the inlet is, is pretty small. Let's see if you guys can see in there. There's your intake. Cylinder quality, of course, looks really good. There is your exhaust. And there is, get the right angle, there's your transfers. There's a slant back cylinder. The way it, this whole, the whole fins are angled, uh, the cylinder in the case itself slant back uh, to save space. Um, this is very thin, won't be able to widen um, or make that very big at all. And then the case itself, it is bottom fed, front fed, right there, and it's small. Crank case volume looks very tight. We have plastic cage bearings on both sides slab side piston we have one locator pin on the intake side and one locator pin for the rings on the exhaust side 
another thing to keep out watch out for the wash the wash looks okay it's not cleaning the top of the piston off perfectly but it looks decent and we've got two dollar signs on that piston good quality stuff And it is a steel, steel branded cylinder. Give you another look at that crankcase here. And where your impulse port comes off of. The thing is quite tidy. Um, crankcase is quite small for a 79cc saw. It's interesting. Okay, now. Oh. Back to the injection system. Looks like three bolts, unless there's a hidden one. I'm seeing that that comes off, unless it's retained by the top bolt. A bolt in behind so that does come off it is actually the clamp for the intake boot so this the pressure fitting slides over that that partition manifold there over the intake and that is a pressure fitting to hold the intake tube on Blow this off. All right. We have a rubber gasket that is molded in. It's got a relief for it, our intake. Right here, the boot goes around this collar. And then we have our fuel injector right in there. So that as the air comes in, uh, it squirts. Let's see the angle here. It squirts kind of straight into the intake charge right there and there's not much of anything i can take apart i don't think this looks like a one piece i might be able to pop this cap off but i don't want to risk ruining the injector itself necessarily though i'm assuming there is an o-ring in there Right here, educated guess. Looks like a fuel pressure regulator. It's vented to atmosphere around here and I can see there's a diaphragm with a spring. So as the fuel <clears throat> comes into the unit and then goes and circulates, it keeps a certain pressure um, for to keep the, the injector feeding the appropriate amount of volume per pulse opening. Um, that the ECU controls. Kind of neat. The only thing that really baffles me at this point though is how it knows when the throttle is open. It must be going off of a set map um, in the ECU that when it sees it, RPMs increase, um, it must just add the appropriate amount of fuel per RPM um, instead of having like a throttle position sensor. I don't see that there's a barometric sensor anywhere on this because this just gets power and this just grounds so that's just for opening it um, so yeah I'm curious and how they know how to map the fuel as the throttles flipped 
A little bit of wizardry going on there in the programming, I'd imagine. Back to the ECU. It is not a T27. It is a T25. One screw in the bottom. Leave the coil. See if there's a trick to getting this out. Oh, yep, there's a stop. So we have to move the side plate. Without breaking it. So this filler plate has to come out and then the ECU can clear. Looks like I have another piece right here. The wire management that sits right here also needs to come out to clear the ECU. Now we have some date codes and uh, identification codes on the ECU and the fuel management system right here. It is all, well, it's like a, it's a tub and then it's resin filled in the top to keep it sealed off. Um, it's got nice rubber O-rings inside here for the, um, for the plugs. Keep that nice and dry. Interesting setup. You can see that's, that's already full of sawdust down in here. And they have some vent holes down there. Um, I'm assuming to let air rise through there and keep the ECU cool. I can see that that is going to be completely full of sawdust um, <laughs> in a short amount of time. So, yeah. Thoughts? Kind of a tech geek. So, this is neat. Neat to see. I'm going to pull the rings and uh, put my timing wheel on it and see where we're at um, for port timing and it looks like all the ports are extremely small so and the cylinder quality looks amazing I'll see what the squish is and I don't know maybe I'll make a video on that who knows maybe I'll just port it test it port it have fun with it sell it like I usually do if you made it 38 minutes into this Thanks for watching.